masaya nating ipaghanda ang magdating ng manunubos na napagligtas natin tuwiri mga landas mga alitan ay tapusin sapagkat si Kristo'y darating In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with with your your spirit. spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. Welcome to the Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary. Let us begin our celebration by first calling to mind all our sins and all our failures, asking God for forgiveness and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of art. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Keep us alert, we pray, O Lord our God, as we await the advent of Christ your Son, so that when he comes and knocks, he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. This is what Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest mountain and raised above the hills. All nations shall stream toward it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, Let us climb the Lord's mountain to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may instruct us in his ways, and we may walk in his paths. For from Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and impose terms on many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. One nation shall not raise the sword against another, nor shall they train for war again. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoiced because they said to me, We will go up to the house of the Lord, and now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem built as a city with compact unity. To it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel to give thanks to the name of the Lord. In it are set up judgment seats, seats for the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Pray for peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you prosper. May peace be within your walls, prosperity in your buildings. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Because of my relatives and friends, I will say, peace be within you. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will pray for your good. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Please stand. Alleluia, alleluia. Come and save us, Lord our God. Let your face shine upon us that we may be saved. Alleluia, alleluia.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion approached him and appealed to him, saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home, paralyzed, suffering dreadfully. He said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion said in reply, Lord, I'm not worthy to have you enter under my roof. Only say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man subject to authority, with soldiers subject to me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come here, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Amen, I say to you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I say to you, many will come from the east and the west and will recline with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob at the banquet in the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Magandang umaga po ulit sa inyong lahat and welcome to the Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary. Kung malaman kung nangyari na sa ating lahat ito, pero sa ibang tao, nangyayari kapag medyo nagigipit, sobrang nagigipit. Sabi natin, kumakapit sa patalim. Kaya nga madalas natin, meron tayong mga naririnig ng mga taong umuutang, di ba? Umuutang na malaking-malaki yung interest, sobrang laki ng interest. Pumapayag na rin dahil nagigipit wala na ibang mapuntahan, desperado na. At importante yung pag, paggagastusan. Halimbawa, nagkasakit yung magulang o nagkasakit yung anak, eh kahit saan kakapit, kahit kain, kanino lalapit, manghihiram, mangungutang, hingi ng tulong. Sumusugal. Sumusugal na sana eh, doon sa kanyang hiniram, eh gagaling yung may sakit o matutupad yung kanyang inaasam-asam. Sana naman eh, hindi matalo. Bahala na si Batman. Sabi nga naman. Bahala na si Batman. Napagandang isipin niyan kasi dito sa gospel na binasa natin, meron isang centurion. Ito lang kung alam ninyo kung anong isipin ni centurion. Pero importante na makita natin, maintindihan natin kung ano ba yung centurion na yan dahil, dahil mahalaga, mahalaga sa kwento. Yung centurion na isang Roman, isang Romano, hindi Jew. Si Jesus, Jew. Ujo. So yung Roman centurion ay Romano, from Rome, ibang culture, ibang religion, ibang Diyos. At hindi lang siya Romano, siya ay centurion, ibig sabihin siya ay leader ng at least 100 people. Kaya nga doon ang galing yung century. Centurion, century, 100. So meron siya at least 100 people under him. Baka doon, di ba? Laking kawal yun, laking batalyon, ano? 100 people. Ang kanyang minamanduhan, ang kanyang kapangyarihan. Okay? So sa laki ng kanyang inaalagaan na ano, may kapangyarihan siya, meron din siya, of course, meron din siyang slaves. Imagine mo kung yung, yung mga kawal mo, mga soldiers mo, eh, meron ka doon kapangyari, kapangyarihan. Di lalong-lalo na doon sa slaves. So naiintindihan niya. Alam niya kung anong ibig sabihin ng kapangyarihan. Alam niya kung anong ibig sabihin ng power and authority. Kaya lang, importante dito, siya ay Roman centurion. Importante kasi lumapit siya kay Jesus. Lumapit siya kay Jesus. Si Jesus sa tingin ng mga Roman, ordinaryong tao lang yan. Siguro teacher, siguro leader. Pero dahil ang Roman government ang namumuno at that time, so, medyo tingin na siguro mas mataas sila. But this Roman leader, the Roman centurion, lumapit kay Jesus at humingi ng tulong. Parang, kumbaga sa, kumbaga sa umpisa natin, parang sabihin natin, kumapit sa patalim. Wala na ibang mapuntahan pa kasi yung kanyang soldier, ay, sorry, yung kanyang servant, ay may sakit. Paralyzed daw, paralyzed. Suffering judgment, hindi makagalaw paralisado 
di makagalaw. So, mean, wala na siguro mapunta ang iba. Pumunta siya kay Jesus para humingi ng tulong. From a being a Roman, sa tingin niya sa kasarili niya siguro, mataas. Pumunta siya kay Jesus sa medyo sa tingin niya siguro, mababa. Dahil di naman niya, di naman niya kalahi yun. Di naman niya kapareho ng culture, kapareho ng religion. Wala namang, yung, wala namang espada si Jesus, no? Hindi naman siya noted for being, you know, vigilant and violent, no? So, pumunta siya kay Jesus para humingan ko. Napakalaking hakbang, no? Napakalaking pagpapakumbaba. Dahil soldier siya, so, A Roman soldier, Roman leader. Pumunta sa isang ordinaryong hudyo at humingi ng tulong. Ano sinasabi nito? Marami. Marami implications. Una, implication, nagpakumbaba siya. So, meron siyang humility. Kahit na mataas ang tingin ng society sa kanya, mataas ang lugar niya sa society, bumaba siya, nagpakumbaba siya, humingi ng tulong kay Jesus. Isa yun. Pangalawa, dahil nagpakumbaba siya, sinugal niya yung kanyang dignidad. Dahil pwede siyang tanggihan ni Jesus, di ba? Sinugan niya yung kanyang dignidad. Ano sinasabi nito? Sinasabi nito kung gano'ng kaimportante sa kanya. Gano'ng niya inaalagaan yung kanyang servant. We're not talking about wife or children. Hindi, servant. Binigyan niya ng pagpapahalaga yung kanyang servant so to the point na magpakumbaba siya kay Jesus para mapagaling yung kanyang servant. So malakas, malakas yung kanyang um, you know, relationship with his servant. Meron siyang compassion. Meron siyang compassion para sa kay malasakit. Meron siyang malasakit para sa kanyang servant. Hindi lang niya, eh, hindi lang or, sa ordinaryong doktor nagpunta eh. Kay Jesus, para humingi ng tulong, nagpakumbaba. Napakalaking bagay, di ba? Pangatlo, siya sabi din dito, din dito, kung gano'n ka, gano'n siya ka believe sa authority at sa power ni Jesus. To the point na pwede siyang magpakumbaba, pinabayaan niya yung sarili niyang magpakumbaba dahil naniniwala siya. May tiwala siya sa kapangyarihan at sa galing ni Jesus Christ. Tatlong bagay, di ba? Napaka-importante. Nagpakumbaba siya, nagmalasakit siya para sa kanyang servant at, si Jesus, at, si, uh, at nagtiwala siya kay Jesus. On the part of Jesus naman, makikita natin din natin na meron maraming mga magagandang nangyayari. Yung una, nakinig siya. Binigay niya ng panahon itong Roman soldier. Kahit nga hindi hudyo, hindi naman sumusunod sa kanya, hindi naman siguro you know, nakikinig sa kanya. Binigay niya ng panahon, nakinig sa kanya. O isa pa palang proof dun sa pagkakatiwala ng centurion kay Jesus ay sabi niya, hindi ka kailangan pumunta sa bahay namin, sabihin mo lang. Magsalita ka lang, sabihin mo lang yung salita, mag- nagagaling na yung aking servant, I'm sure, gagaling na yun. Utusan mo lang na gumaling yung servant ko at gagaling na yun. Ganun kalaki ang tiwala ng sintoyan kay Jesus. At so, pagdating kay Jesus, makita natin na yun, binigay niya ng panahon, binigay niya ng panahon si yung sintoyan, Binigyan din niya ng panahon. Ang malasakit din siya, meron din siyang pagmamahalo, pagkalinga doon sa servant ng centurion. Daming pinapakita sa atin, simpleng kwento. Pwede rin tayong magtanong sa ating sarili. Sa ating sarili. How deep is our faith in God? Gaano ba kalalim ang pananampalataya natin? Katulad ba ng pananampalataya ng centurion? Gaano kalalim ang pananampalataya? Ang tiwala natin kay Jesus. Ang tiwala natin sa Diyos. Alulalo na kung na tayo'y nagigipit, ano? Pag nagigipit tayo, kung hindi natin alam kung saan pupunta, ano gagawin, mayroong delikada sa buhay, sa, sa pamilya. Gaano kalalim ang tiwala natin at paniniwala natin sa Diyos, sa Panginoon. Meron kaya tayong paniniwala at tiwala sa ibang tao. Diba? Centurion had faith and belief and, and trust in another person, kay Jesus Christ. Tayo. 
gaano kalalim yung pananampalataya ng pan- paniniwala natin, yung tiwala natin sa ibang tao. Lalong-lalo na dun sa mga malilit na tayo, mga higit tayo hindi inaasahan. O gaano kalalim yung ating concern for them. May tayo siguro ang mga may iba sa atin, mayroong mga kasambahay, no? Mayroong mga nagtatrabaho para sa atin. Gaano kalalim yung ating concern for them? O para ba sila ba ay para lang mga mga ano yan, mga muebles sa bahay, no? Inaalala ba natin sila? Inaalagaan ba natin sila? Yung mga malilit na tao na nagtatrabaho para sa atin. Siguro, sa din pagkakataon, ang araw nito para uh, para magpasalamat sa Diyos. Sa ating paniniwala at sa ating pagtitiwala sa Kanya. Na tayo nandito, siguro, marami sa atin, may hinihingi sa Diyos, may hinihingi sa mahal na ina, Kapag gumihingi tayo, di ba tayo hihingi kung wala tayong tiwala, di ba? So malamang meron tayong, kahit pa paano, meron tayong tiwala sa Diyos, meron tayong tiwala sa malabir. Gano'n kalalim yan? Gano'n kalalim? Magpasalamat. Gano'n man kalalim yan, no, kababaw, kahit mer- at least meron pa rin pagtitiwala, meron pa rin paniniwala. Magpasalamat. Salamat tayo sa Diyos, salamat tayo sa manay na. Sana yung mga dasal natin, katulad ng dasal ng centurion, ay ibigay din sa atin. Sana yung hinihingi natin ay ayon din sa kagustuhan ng Diyos. We pray and hope that what we pray for, what we ask God, either to the help of the Blessed Mother or directly to God, what we pray for will be granted to us because what we pray for is according to the will of God, according to the will of Jesus Christ. Let us all stand down and offer to God all our needs and all our prayers. As we enter the season of Advent, we make our prayer to God, our Father, with all our hearts so that we can avail ourselves of the opportunity for a new beginning in grace. After each petition, we say, God of mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, hear our prayer. That those who minister in the church may bring the light of the gospel to all mankind. Let us pray to the Lord. God of mercy, hear our prayer. That in our lives, we may show the same love and compassion that the centurion had for his servant to those who need our help. Let us pray to the Lord. God of mercy, hear our prayer. That we may understand and accept those people who differ from us in race and religion. Let us pray to the Lord. God of mercy, hear our prayer that the elderly, the lonely, and the sick may receive the comfort of God's love in their distress. Let us pray to the Lord. God of mercy, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed may meet the Lord whom they eagerly awaited. Let us pray to the Lord. God of mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for our own personal intentions and for the special intentions of this Mass. We pray to the Lord. God of mercy, hear our prayer. That our Father help us to grow in our compassion and give hope to all those who touch our lives. May Advent bring us closer to you and each other as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Be specific.
Pray, my dear friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Accept, we pray, O Lord, these offerings we make gathered from among your gifts to us, and may what you grant us to celebrate devoutly here below gain for us the prize of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For He assumed at His first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and open for us the way to eternal salvation, that when He comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Indeed, Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by taking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Socrates, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, our most chaste spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray now to our Father in heaven in the words that our Lord himself has taught us.
First, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, I said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take you away the sins, sins of the world, world have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please me. This is Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to this banquet. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
please kneel for the credo of stewardship. Please join me. I believe in the God of love, the owner of everything, who possesses everyone. I believe in the God of mercies, who has chosen me to be a steward of Mother Nature and Mother Church. In spite of who I am and what I have done, and in spite of the infidelities he knows I will still commit. I believe in the power of giving and in the power of loving like Jesus, because love is the only way to holiness. Giving is the best proof of loving, and perfect renunciation leads to unlimited fruitfulness. I believe that in freely giving my time, in humbly sharing my talents, and in generously sacrificing my treasures, the Lord will always provide. He will take care of all my needs and bless me with infinite reward on earth and in heaven. I will be the first to give. I will not wait for the others. I will keep on giving, even if others do not give. I will not be afraid to have none. I believe that the best time to share is now, not tomorrow. For tomorrow is an excuse of the greedy. I will keep my needs and wants simple and few, for I believe that in reducing my selfishness, I will grow in happiness and holiness. I am the steward of the Lord. I will return all these to Him with abundant yield. Much is asked of me, because much has been given to me. I praise the Lord for His kindness to me, now and forever. Amen. Please stand. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Let us pray. May these mysteries, O Lord, in which we have participated, profit us, we pray. For even now, as we walk amid passing things, you teach us by them to love the things of heaven and hold fast to what endures through Christ our Lord. Amen. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat sa pakikisa sa Santa Misa. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you all. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. We go in the peace and the love of Christ. Thanks be to God. We shall now pray for the sick and bless your religious articles. Our help us in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Let us pray. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing you give us strength and support in our frailty. Turn with kindness toward our sick brothers and sisters. Free them from all illness and restore them to good health through the intercession of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they will gratefully bless your holy name. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ, Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary. May all these articles be blessed and those who use them made holy, as they fulfill the will of God according to the example of the Blessed Mother. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.